Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar today brought to you by Automation Services, the USA provider of case Warrior data analysis software. I'd like to thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to take a look at a brand new set of analysis tools, actually the fourth of six modules, scripted specifically for use in your IDEA data analysis software. These new sets of analytics are called IDEA Audit Solutions. Today we're going to focus on the journal entry module of tests. My name is Scott Smith. I'm the sales engineer here at Automation Services, and it's my job to help you get the best and most efficient use out of your IDEA data analysis software. Basically, we're trying to add a deeper understanding of the business process as built into our audit solution scripts, and this will drive up auditing effectiveness. At Automation Services, we firmly believe that setting auditing testing standards will drive your organization to improve efficiency and effectiveness. Building data analysis skills as a core competency for your entire staff, everybody on the staff, will ensure that you always have the right staff in place to get the audit done timely and completely and, probably most importantly, with maximum client satisfaction. So the question comes up, why audit journal entries? Well, there are many reasons to audit your journal entries. Although there are typically some pretty strict controls related to journal postings, we all know that at crunch time, when we have to close the books at the end of a period, system level controls can be suspended, they can be turned off or plain overridden. And the result could be increased errors and possibly fraud. Not to mention it's kind of embarrassing when those things are caught and it gets out into the mainstream media. We don't want that to happen. Lastly, most jurisdictions, auditing standards require testing of journal entries by external audit, SAS 99. Ideas Audit Solution modules were designed to help with this specific challenge. Idea Audit Solutions are canned or recorded scripts and tests. They're very easy to use. They provide standardized, consistent results every time that they're run. And there's currently six function-specific packages available. We have General Ledger, Expense Controls, Procurement, Accounts Payable, Journal Entries, and Travel Expenses. And there's at least four more that are coming down the pipe as we speak. In the future, we could see payroll, fixed assets, inventory, and a general fraud analysis module. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more, please log on to our website, www.automation.com, or call your account manager directly. They'll be the best place to get the information on how to get a hold of these tests and then start effectively using them. So with all that said, we're going to jump right in, kind of dive in, and run a handful of the scripts that are included in the journal entry module. There's 14 tests. I'm probably going to have time today to do three or four of the tests in the time that we've allotted. So we can do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close out PowerPoint and make IDEA active on my screen. Now this time, I'm starting it just a little bit different. And the reason is, is I kind of neglected to show the import process. You can see down here in the lower left-hand corner, I have a managed project in version 9 of IDEA called Audit Solutions-JE for journal entries. I've pointed IDEA to that project, and inside of my project in my library, I have one file, ABC Companies Journal Entries for 2013. What I need to do is take that actual data set, that live data, and make a copy of it inside of IDEA. Everybody knows how to do that, I'm sure, but let's walk through it real quick. On the Home tab, I'm going to click Desktop and choose Excel. You can see there's a ton of different file types that we can import without any problem whatsoever. Navigate to where that file is located. It defaults to the Source Files folder in your current project library. Choose the file. Hit Next. It's going to tell me this is a pretty good size Excel spreadsheet. It has about close to 6,000 rows of data. That's a tiny spreadsheet. IDEA can handle upwards of 2 billion rows in a single file. Click OK. First row of data is actually field names. If there's any numeric columns in here that have no data, I want a zero in there. I don't want to have the issue of trying to do math on a blank. And then simply click OK. OK, there's the process of getting your data into IDEA and getting it ready to use. You can see this 
standard general journal file that I have has basic information, journal account number, account type, account description, debits, credits, and on across. Pretty typical information that you would see in any of the data that you might be looking to analyze. Now just like with all of the other packages that we have shown in the past, I have an Audit Solutions tab that I created on my ribbon. If I click on that tab, I also have a group in here called Journal Entries, and I've placed five tests. If we get to all five of them, we're doing good. I'm going to start at the start here and start running a couple of these tests. Out of the 14, I've chose to look at journal vouchers that don't balance. All journal entries should balance to zero. We know that. And while many accounting packages enforce this, some don't. This test is not necessarily designed, per se, to find fraud. This is a, is my control working test? Is my control in place? Is it functioning? Because we know at crunch time, you got to get the books closed. You can override that control. This test will help you see if the control possibly has been overridden or if anything else is happening. I'm going to click on test number nine, journal vouchers that do not balance. Just like before, select the voucher file in File Explorer window. There's my ABC Company's journal entries. I'm going to click OK. And we get the same dialog boxes. These tests were made to be simple. All you have to do is click the test, follow the dialog box, and answer the questions. The voucher number. The debit. And lastly, the credit. Click OK. Idea is going to walk through this in two steps, do a little summarization of the data, and then it's going to look where the debit didn't equal the credit, and we have an unbalanced journal. Very easy, very simple, but you know, like we said, a lot of times this is required to be done by external audit. Why not get ahead of the game and test it beforehand? Last step in this particular test. It outputs a nice, simple Excel spreadsheet with this data in it. All right, that's journal vouchers that do not balance. Very valid test. I'm going to close out our results here. Go back over to the File Explorer. And we're going to jump right to the next test. The next test that I chose to run is rounded sum journal voucher transaction amounts. Although there there may be legitimate reasons for rounded transactions. They don't really naturally occur within accounting records. And they may indicate suspicious activities, possibly where an estimate is used. For example, a provision for doubtful debts. These are often rounded, and this may indicate that an estimate has been or had little thought process into it. Quite frankly, it may get forgotten. So let's go ahead and test for rounded values. On the Audit Solutions tab, I'm going to use the journal entry test number seven, rounded sum transactions. Select the voucher file, same as we did before. Click open. This one only has two options to choose, the debit and the credit. So from your data, just drill down using the drop down boxes and answer the two pieces of information that are required to run this test. And then the third option comes up. This is that mod option. Basically, it's going to divide the value by a number. And if the remainder is zero, that is a rounded sum. And you get to choose to what level the dollar value is. If you put a one in here, you get the cents only. If you put a 10, you get the first dollar amount. If you put a 100, you get a hundreds amount. So you get to see how big are the values that you really want to look at that are rounded. Just for practice, I'm going to use 1000 and click OK. And you can see in the debits or the credits, anything above the thousand digit or bigger that is rounded shows up in my data set. Very valid test. Something I might want to do maybe multiple iterations. Do the 10 and then the 100 and then the mod 1000. 
to look for increasingly large numbers of rounded data. I believe this guy provides us a nice little output data set also in Excel format in our project. All right, let's go ahead and close this out. And I have another test that I've chosen. This is vouchers posted outside of office hours. Transactions at unusual times, it's not usual, or maybe it's unusual for staff to be posting journal entries at other times outside, maybe when the office is closed. And the transactions posted at these times may indicate that they're trying to cover their tracks or they're doing something suspicious. You don't know. One way or the other, we want to be able to look at a specific time. This is going to test for transactions that happen before 8 a.m. and after 6 p.m. Let's choose voucher transactions outside of office hours. Indicate the database that we want to interrogate. And one question. The only column that you have to have in your data set for this particular test is the time that the voucher was posted. Most large ERP systems, relational database systems, will time stamp the record as its input and as it is extracted out of the system. So any activity on the record gets a time stamp. This test depends on the fact that this was posted at a specific time. Click OK. An idea is going to walk through. There's 584 occurrences. Let's scroll over a little bit and find our posted time. There it is. Posted time. And you can see in military time wise, 1800 and then before 8 o'clock, oh, 0700 hours. May not be anything unusual about this at all, but it's a good solid test. Very quick to be able to amass a large set of data and look through it for time frames that could be indicating some suspicious activities. And an output to an Excel spreadsheet so it can be handed off to management or to other sources for review. Back to the File Explorer. We're walking through these fairly quick. I hope you're getting the sense. These tests were made to be easy to run. They provide the same output the same way every time. So it can be handed off to staff member to just have them walk through all 14 tests at one time. You get the data, you run the 14 tests, you get the output, you get the Excel spreadsheets, and it's all in history inside of IDEA to document the process. Let's go to the fourth test top journal voucher transaction amounts. What this test does is summarize the data by account. And then at each account, it does a top value extraction. Give me the highest value inside of each account. Click on the test number three. Choose your data one more time. A lot of questions to answer in this one. General ledger account number. That one's already the top of the list for us, account description, our debit, and then our credit, and then the voucher number. Five pieces of data to identify. Click OK. And you can see several steps involved to get from point A to point Z. And it gives you a indicator of the top values by account category. Anytime you see the blue number inside of a number of records column in IDEA, it's actually a drill down. If you click on it, it'll take you back to the underlying data that supports that particular summarized row. I can save this. I can print it. I can just look at it and, and get my head wrapped around it and be done. And of course, we get our output in Excel form. Since we have a little bit of time, what I'm going to do is a test that's a little bit more complex this time. This is a trend analysis of journal amounts summarized by quarter. Each one of these tests that I've done so far, fairly simple tests, they're just fast to produce. Get my data, click my test, run through it. I can do these manually. It's a heck of a lot easier to have a tied down recorded script that I can run that I know absolutely gives me the same output the same way every time. But if I get into some of the more complex tests, it would take a whole lot more work to be able to do that. Trend analysis 
of journal entries will do many steps with the data in between. It's going to separate it out by quarter, by account, and then put into one table all of the data by account for each quarter across the screen. Let's go ahead and run that test. Choose your data set. Click open. And answer the six questions that are put up into the dialog box. General ledger count code. Account description. Transaction amount debit. Credit amount. Voucher posted date. Posted time voucher. Posted date. There we go. And the voucher number. A lot of information required to be able to do all of the separate aggregations of data. And ultimately, this guy's going to use one of the more advanced features inside of IDEA, which is using a join that's called Visual Connector. We don't want to go into that. Way too complicated. Let's just have IDEA do it under the hood for us in the form of a script. Got my pieces of data identified. Click OK. Now you'll watch the files being created across the top of the screen. And at the end of it, I get a file right here that has the account and the dollar values by quarter. I can very easily look at the trends by category, by account. How is my spending going? Very useful, very powerful test. And if you had to do each one of these individual extractions and summarizations and then reassembling of the data set yourself, it could be quite a task. But what we got on this one is an output very easy just by identifying six data elements within our data set. I hope everybody is seeing that these tests, although not rocket surgery, are very valid. The fact that these auditing standards dictate that an external auditor will be, or should be, in most jurisdictions, looking at the journal entries should indicate that you probably need to be ahead of that game. Do it ahead of time so you can have answers when you get asked the specific questions. Ideas Audit Solutions were built specifically for that. They're simple test, consistent output, consistent file format every time, all in history, everything that you need in order to run the test and present the test are all in one simple place. That's all of the tests that I have. Five tests, very quick, very fast, out of the 14 that are available in the package. But what we want to do now is potentially open this guy back up for a couple of questions. So give me a couple of seconds to fire up PowerPoint. And we've, as you can see, we've had customer a couple customers that have purchased some of the modules have given us a little bit of an indication that they're saving some time. That's a good thing. To find the latest product, like I said, there's currently six modules available. There's four more coming down the pipe. If you're interested, go to www.automation.com. On the main page, there's a little blue box. Click on this Audit Solutions link right here, and it'll take you to the page to show you the test packages. And what's contained in them. If you want to, type that guy into your address bar and it'll jump you straight to the page with all the information on it, make it a little bit quicker for you. And lastly, if you have any questions, you want more information, the best person-to-person -person place that you can go, call your account manager. They have all of the information related to this, but we've made it simple. You can purchase them over the web. If you need help, the idea help desk, that 20-minute rule is alive and well. For installation and configuration questions, give them a call. I had many questions regarding some of the tests that I showed last week. Feel free to get a hold of me. I'll probably answer you directly, but CC your account manager so they can do the follow-up with you. But I'm always happy to get on the phone and go over some of the questions that you have. If there are any questions, if you could please type them into the box. Okay, I said, I do not have an Audit Solutions tab. Are these scripts, where are they and where can I get them? That's a great question. If you noticed on my IDEA instance, I had an extra tab. I created a little video that shows 
how to get to this exact spot that you go to to create the tab, name the tab, and then create the group within the tab and the whole process of adding items to that menu. Very simple to do. Feel free to get a hold of me, get a hold of the help desk, they can show you, or better yet, the video walks from point A to point Z and shows you all the steps in between on how to make it happen. Okay, the next one. What about testing for day a week, example on Saturdays? You know what? That's a good question. I don't think in that particular, and I'd have to go back and look at the test by name to see if there is a day of week test that's scripted. It's doable in idea, absolutely. If it's scripted, I'm not sure about that. Lindsay, if you wouldn't mind, send me an email after we're done so I can check up onto it and I will pose this to the professional services team to see what that possibility is. Doing day of the week testing in idea, absolutely, yeah, there's, a, there's an at function that will do that for you. Can you demo any other journal entry features like the Pareto function? I can do that. If you folks have time and you want to sit on the phone for a few more minutes, I can do the Pareto function. Okay, and then that's an, one more time with the top journal voucher script. Can you compare it to the average amount posted to that amount as well? You can do that. It's not written into the script. That would be an external. Once you've got the result, that's a database, an idea. It's fair game for use or for inclusion in any other tests that you might come up with. It's not a provided script that's in the package or in the module right at the moment, but that, that would be a good one to think about also. If we want to see the Pareto testing, I can do that now. Let me see. Hang on a second. I'm going to cancel PowerPoint. And I'm going to see over here on the macros folder inside of my project, I have a bunch of tests. The Pareto analysis right here, test number one. What I'm going to do is, in order to, since it's not on my menu, I'm going to fire it off manually. I'm going to go to the Macros tab and hit Run. The Macros tab and the Run button defaults to the Macros folder in your current project library. I'm going to choose the Pareto analysis of amounts. Click OK, and it walks through just like all the other tests. Choose my general uh, journal entry file. Enter the upper bound for category C low value voucher transaction amounts. So what I need to do is, after having my head wrapped around my particular data, what would be the upper bound for category C low value journal amounts? I'm going to do $20,000 and click OK. Now, the last question, or the next question, excuse me, enter the upper bound for category B medium value accounts. 30,000. Now I've defined my parameters. The big picture, I need to give it the columns within the data set that it's going to use to calculate those values and give me my results. The voucher number. the debit, and the credit. Pretty simple. If you've, ever, if you've done any looking about the Pareto testing, it's pretty pervasive across multiple functional areas. I would suggest that you go online and read about it. Uh, same thing I had to do when I started doing Benford's testing. I knew about the guy. I understood. I knew how to say his name. But how did he come up with it, and what does it actually do? How does it help you look and, and kind of ferret out fraud? Very interesting. This is the same thing. Go online and look it up. Read about it a little bit. Lastly, let's click OK. You can see quite a few tests that will have to be done. With the limits that I put into it, it puts the data in certain rows of data. And the drill downs, of course, are always it lets me see how it came up with this particular bit of information. Voucher number 4,000, this dollar value. Any time that you see data displayed in this format, in this manner, an idea, it's a result. And a result is intimately tied to the data that was used in order to create that result, and the result hangs around. So if I'm looking at my 
Pareto analysis output, I can always go back and look at my data. This is the file that was used to create it. I can go back and look at my output as a result also. That's how you run the test. Are there any other questions? I'm not seeing anything else typed into the box. We are well past our 30 minutes that I've I was told that I had to be able to show you folks this module of tests. So let me go over here one more time just to wrap this guy up. The Idea Help Desk is always available and it is absolutely your best line of defense. If you run into trouble, that 20 minute rule will save you a ton of time. We've been doing this for over 23 years now. It's very likely that the questions that you've had, we've run into it more than once or twice, maybe a whole handful of times. All that means is, is that we can help get you rolling really fast. Doesn't cost you anything. It's included in the price of your software. If you have questions or would like to purchase any of these modules, you can go online and do it through the web. If you want more information and talk to a human, give your account manager a call and they have all of the information to get you rolling down the road quickly. If I have no other questions, I want to tell everybody I appreciate you giving me a small portion of your day to show you some of these new analytics and make it a great day.